Chip Trek are an American rock band from Illinois. Uh, they were formed in 1973, and they're still going, apparently. Uh, but the peak of their fame was the late 70s. Uh, they were known as being power pop, which is effectively pop rock. Um, they were popular first in, Jap- in Japan, and then in America. Um, and their best-known song is I Want You To Want Me, which is a staple uh, of pop rock compilations. Hi, my name's Dan. Uh, so this was their first album. Um, and if you look at the dates, so in my introduction, I was saying that they were formed in 1973. This is 1977, their first album. So it's a few years later on. Uh, they must have been touring uh, quite a bit in the meantime, I would guess. Um, uh, and it certainly sounds like they've gelled together as a band, um, uh, which, you know, obviously a good thing. Uh, they're generally described as being power pop, uh, but I would describe this album as being hard rock. Um, I think it's more raw edged than some of their later stuff. In fact, I would say there's quite a large uh, flavour of uh, British glam rock from the early 70s in here, particularly the, the first track. Now that leads me on to... Um, uh, there's a little bit of... Uh, controversy is not the right word... Uh, but when they released the This Is A Vinyl album, which is obviously how it was uh, first released, they had one side which was side A and the other side which was side 1. Um, so they didn't have a side B or, or a side 2. Um, and so the choice of which order that these are, uh, the, the sides should be played in uh, was left up to the listener uh, at that point. When it was first uh, released on CD... Uh, side A came first and then Side 1. Uh, but later, a later re-release of it on CD uh, claimed that it was the band's preferred order and that was Side 1 before Side A, and that's the version that I've listened to. Not that it's had a huge impact, I think, on the on the album experience. I think it can work either way around. Anyway, where was I? Yes, kind of glam rock, but some of the songs are a bit more mellowed and laid back. I was curious to see there's a track called mandocello which is named after an instrument so let's quickly dive into that so you've probably heard of a mandolin uh, and a mandolin is a fretted and strummed version but of uh, a violin in the sense that it's the same tuning as a violin so a mandolin and a violin are tuned the same you can also get uh mando violas sorry mandolas that's the right term and uh, obviously it's the same as a viola and you can get mandocellos and i have only once in my life seen a mandocello uh, but i know that they exist in fact i've played one um so i'm curious about this and uh sure enough in the uh, in the credits of who played what the guitarist is credited with playing the mandocello so uh i found that curious and it's an interesting uh use of the slightly different tone from the guitar there um the singing's all right. It's not particularly noteworthy. Uh, uh, the guy uh, has got a, uh, Robin Zander, I think, uh, has got a decent enough rock voice, but it's not one that kind of stands out above uh, other voices or particularly distinctive, I would say. The, uh, I would then also say that I think that, that the strength of this album comes from the songs. So the songs are about diverse things. There's a certain kind of anti-establishment feel here. There's anti-school. There's a song about how evil tax men are. There's a song about um, a serial murderer. There's all sorts of bizarre things to explore there. And it certainly steps out from the kind of classic relationship stuff that you'd find on lots of albums. Uh, so it was refreshing in that sense. Uh, overall, though, it didn't make a huge impression of me. I mildly enjoyed it, mostly for the songwriting. Do you know this album? What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, that's it from me for now. Mm-hmm.